I think we should be ready to go. We have 45 participants. Again, welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for joining this breakout room, uh, the breakout room number one on climate finance. Um, my name is Daniela Kiliak. I am a senior consultant with Climate Policy Initiative, which is an analysis and advisory organization. Um, my work focuses on climate finance for agriculture, land use, um, and forestry. And today um, I will be facilitating this uh, breakout room together with Richard. And uh, I'll invite you, Richard, to introduce yourself. And then we have the support of Tommy. Uh, perhaps afterwards you could introduce yourself as well. Thanks, thanks, Daniela. Hi, hi, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Richard Charlton. I'm the Vice President of Operations at um, at Tetra Tech. It's great to be supporting the the BIFAD and, and subcommittee on climate uh, climate change uh, today. Uh, I'm excited, particularly, to be in this group. I've worked on climate finance for the last twenty years, both at kind of the institutional level with with institutional climate finance programs like like the GCF and Adaptation Fund, but but also a lot in ag finance um, and insurance and disaster risk finance. So there's so many pieces of this puzzle to to work through, and it's great to have such a such an excellent group today to help us think through the full the full range of issues that we need to to look at on climate finance. So thanks and thanks, Daniela. Maybe over to you, Tommy. Yeah, thanks, Richard. Hi, everyone. It's uh, it's great to see you all here. Um, my name is Tommy Crocker. I'm a intern at Tetra Tech's Agriculture and Economic Growth Sector. Um, I've been helping support this uh, meeting uh, and some of the research research. Um, that's going into the BIFAD climate change study. So yeah, I'm very excited to have everyone here. And um, yeah, I look forward to the discussion. Over to you, Danielle. Great, thanks so much, Richard and Tommy. Um, so as you heard, but I'll repeat it just to, as a refresher, uh, the purpose of this session is to identify priority systems and leverage points for transformative change to advance climate change adaptation and mitigation while considering inclusion of unrepresented underrepresented populations, gender equality and social including, inclusion, um, and also the enabling environment. So before we begin, maybe I'll ask uh, Tommy to explain a little bit more about how to use the Jamboard. Yeah, so hi everyone. So for the breakout session today, we're gonna be using this interactive plant platform Jamboard um, to capture ideas. The link should be available in the Zoom chat. If not, it will be soon. Um, and so we encourage participants to use the blank sticky notes to add ideas and to add text, um, participants double click the sticky note. Um, and if more sticky notes are needed, um, participants or myself can add more um, using the note icon on the left side of the screen. Uh, there's also room for notes for recommended resources and references. Um, this can include direct links or citations, um, and these will be considered by the study, study team and subcommittee. Um, please share your organization and uh, affiliation briefly before um, sharing ideas. Um, and in Jamboard, participants should add these at the end of each uh, sticky note. Uh, please note that all written comments will be captured in the uh, public record and that I will be um, in the Jamboard helping organize uh, ideas throughout the discussion. So thanks. Hello, Daniel, can I say something? Uh, sure, yes. Great if you can kick off the discussion. Uh, the, thank you very much for your nice uh, arrangement. I am Gopal Krishna Devnath uh, from Bangladesh. It's the South East Asia. Our country is uh, vulnerable from climate uh, change uh, issue. And uh, from an adaptation point of view, I think at first needed awareness, social awareness about the climate change issue and uh, how adaptation approach will be transmitted to vulnerable people. It is the most important issue. When they should aware that they are facing disasters from climate change, and this is the way how they can adapt their livelihood, their employment generation, their gender mainstreaming, their social inclusion, everything. Then from their own experience, from their own background of life, they will find out a way. And these types of capacity development activity is very important. 
not very big investment is needed. At least needed knowledge sharing. And accordingly take their view and with their view, give some idea how they can improve their life, how they can prepare themselves for future threat of climate change issue, like safe drinking water, salinity intrusion, and disaster period preparedness like this. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Gopal. Um, I just wanted to encourage everyone, um, you can intervene either by raising your hand, uh, either you can post in the chat uh, or directly in the sticky notes so on the Jamboard. That would be great. Um, please don't be shy. We are this is a we are welcoming all the ideas. Um, so, yeah, Richard. Thanks, uh, thanks, Daniela. Yeah, maybe just to respond, Gopal, and, and help us uh, focus a bit on on how to how we would like to capture some of these uh, ideas. I think your your point uh, is totally spot on in in so many ways. Um, all adaptation is is local, and, and and we really need to find ways to help local communities understand the risks that they face and uh, allow them and empower them to, to make decisions and take action to um, invest in their in their livelihoods and make the changes that are needed under under a changing climate. And of course, finance is a critical component of that. And so many of us working in this area are, are looking at ways to improve access to, to credit for um, households to switch livelihoods or adapt livelihoods in, in, in different ways. And so I, I, I wonder if we could kind of dig into that issue a bit more in this session and think through what are the kind of priority systems that we need to focus on and improve so that those communities get better access to, to finance for adaptation and mitigation um purposes and and then we even go a bit a bit deeper and trying to find out where the real kind of opportunities for for leverage points are um taking into account you know some maybe some of the lessons from places like bangladesh that have been so proactive in um helping to shape uh, global fi climate finance institutions and setting up national climate finance funds and, and other mechanisms to try to try to do that. So I think that's really where we want to go is take that really important point and dig down a bit into um, the priority systems we need to um, to support and develop and, and where those leverage points are for for change so that we can help advise USAID on, on where to focus. Thanks. Great points, Richard. Thanks so much. Um, I also wanted to point out uh, the comments from Coco. Um, he or she, sorry, uh, I don't know, um, points out to three priority systems, food supply chains, farm level practices, and financial risk management um, that fosters regenerative and net zero food production. Um, so fully agree with those. Um, I will not uh, go too much into commenting them because I see a lot of people would like to intervene and I'll give now the um, uh, the occasion to speak to Camilo uh, from Olam. Please go ahead. Hey. Hello, uh, this is Camilo Sanchez from Olam. Uh, nice to meet you, thank you for the invitation. I, I was struggling a little bit trying to put my notes on. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but I... Uh, communicate that to you. If you have any hints, that will be helpful. So one of the points that I want that I was uh, gonna make, and I going back to Sarah's uh, presentation, is that indeed the private sector is very committed to advancing in sustainability in general. Of course, climate change is one of them, and uh, this is for the long haul because we as an opportunity, as a business opportunity, yet and also uh, the right thing to do. Uh, however, uh, it has been difficult uh, to unlock our resources with the resources of the donor community. So I think those are constraints that are uh, uh, preventing us to advance quicker and more effectively. 
in 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 any regard. Of course, this is uh, specifically to uh, finance and, and, and sustainable finance. But uh, I think that's a point that we all have to bring about uh, with the donor community, so that we can find ways to get more access to those resources. When you have an instructor plan and instructor uh, strategy, as we do, uh, we often find that it's difficult to, to find that. Another point that I want to make is that uh, we are good in these in these meetings defining the problem, uh, but we really need to dig in what the solution seems to be and how we can tackle those solutions. Um, for example, uh, we have been uh, trying to access finance for sustainability, and there are many mechanisms to do that, but uh, achieving that at a broader level is a challenge. So how can we... Um, Sorry, Camilo, can I ask you if you can improve in any way uh, your audio? Uh, we don't hear very well. Oh, I'm sorry because I had my mic uh, all the Great. way up. Yeah, I'm sorry. Good. I'm sorry. I, I don't know if I got my points across uh, at the beginning, but uh, in summary, what I want to say is that I was listening to one of the consultants uh, who was speaking about the private sector role. And I do agree with that person that the private sector is fully committed for the long haul. I mean, there may be one of two brain <laughs> brain washers, uh, as you call them, but in general, the private sector is taking serious steps on on implementing measurements to include sustainability as part of the core business. So something that 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 has to be uh, really has to to transform the system is how we approach that uh, supply and demand system. So. Uh, my point and what, what I was mentioning before is that for us has been difficult, even though we have a lot of investment in sustainability activities, it has been difficult to leverage the resources of the donor community, which are uh, vast resources, uh, effectively. So how can we unlock that in a meaningful way? And, and because we seem to be competing for resources, which is not our role. Our role is to implement sustainable practices so our supply chains, in the case of uh, my company, and I represent the coffee uh, business unit. So in, in that case, we can uh, provide sustainable practices to our uh, suppliers and so on and so forth. We are committed to that. So how can we tackle that uh, difficulty and, and really get access to that? That's that's one of the points. And I was saying also that we are good in these uh, meetings describing the problems. And I mean, I, it seems to me that we all know what the supply problems uh, or what the problems are in the supply chain in general. Uh, but I, I think we need to discuss more in detail how or ideas on how to tackle them. I mean, nobody has the bullet silver bullet to do that, but we really need to be creative and, and propose actions, proactive actions. Yeah, exactly. And if you have any ideas that you could share with us um, on what are the points, where should where should uh, the uh, the problems, how could we start to address them? What are, what are the points where that can happen, especially from the perspective of the private sector? That would be great. One point, we, one point yeah. that I mentioned already, and I'm glad you are <laughs> commenting on that, is what I just mentioned. How can we uh, better have access to those resources that are there mm -hmm. for the communities, not for the companies? Because we are not seeking resources for us. We are seeking resources for the supply chains where we work and for, for the countries where we work. And how we can unlock those resources in a, in a more, uh, I will say, faster way so that we, yeah. can, so that we can implement together uh, programs that are really impactful. Because we yeah. have a lot of activities around uh, our supply chains and we have a lot of leverage that we can put to the service of any project and quickly hit the ground running and implement activities right away. We ourselves yeah. have our own experts design climate change adaptation techniques, uh, resilient agriculture, everything is, is within, within house now. So, yeah. so uh, um, sorry, I... 
I'm just very conscious of the time and I would like to give the chance to others to, to yeah. intervene. But what the, the takeaway for me there is that there needs to be more discussions and communication between private companies and the donor community to see how to better structure finance. Um, I would like to let AO take uh, now the floor. Thank you so much, Camilla. Okay. I have more to um, say, but hello? I will wait. <laughs> please, uh, please put it in the chat uh, because we only have about uh, four minutes left, I think, or five. And if you could put it in the chat, then we are we'll make sure to record that. So perfect. Um, perfect. Ao. Hi. Um, sorry. Uh, my name is Akin, um, and I'm from Nigeria. Um, and I just wanted to um, uh, you know, give a brief about what Camilo um, raised as well. Um, I currently am representing um, a national government, a few other development agencies, and what the goal of the of the initiative is that they're trying to raise the global investment fund um, uh, to prevent uh, food loss and waste. Uh, but it's rather very complex because you you know. I'm afraid we lost you. We cannot hear, at least I cannot hear. Richard, can you hear? No, so I think we lost um, lost him. Uh, I'm sorry, we can we cannot hear you. You're breaking up really bad. Um, can you hear me now? Yes. Oh. Okay. I'm so sorry about that. I think it's it's pretty my network. Uh, so I was trying to say that um, I I, um, I I I understand what Camilo is saying. Um, like I said, uh, the initiative is supposed to bring together a um, uh, to bring together the private sector uh, to lean on um, governments to be able to prevent um, food loss and waste. Uh, and the way to use Nigeria as um, as the launching part. Um, one of the issues that we faced was government and policy. Uh, I'm afraid we lost you again. I did get the idea of uh, government and policy as an, a leverage point. Okay, while waiting, I see there are a number of other comments um, in the chat box uh, from Jen. Yeah, I, I, I already yes. posted them in the Jamboard, but um, I think two of the big issues, I mean, we talk a lot, like there are comments about insurance or credit, but it's coordination of ag credit, ag insurance and climate friendly extension. Like that's a huge issue. We have them here. We do insurance here. We do credit, but we're not coordinating those inputs that are needed at the smallholder farmer or producer level. And then on the other side, and systems, just the huge um, costs that, for example, people working in ministries or in um, agencies on the ground trying to support climate adaptation have in tracking the various financial mechanisms that they can access and the complicated um, processes to access, access those mechanisms that vary by mechanism means that the costs are really, really, really high. And so there needs to be some really high level coordination of these processes in order to make sure that um, countries really have access. Thanks. Thanks so much, Jen. So I understand you're referring to governments accessing international finance. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, governments and accredited organizations. Yeah. Great. Thanks so much. Uh, we have uh, Zane would like to intervene. Please go ahead, Zane. Thank you so much. Just building on what was said earlier, um, so in the in the Jamboard, I had mentioned the uh, forecast-based financing, which allows humanitarian agencies and governments to dispense finances to deal with a disaster ahead of its occurrence rather than with the repercussions of it. Um, but this very much depends on the availability and accessibility of climate information. And while that sphere is getting better and better, there is the challenge of uh, accessing indigenous communities and for indigenous communities to uh, be able to, to use the climate information. 
Uh, and this very much needs investment into translating the climate information and services uh, into indigenous languages and making sure that we reach the smallholder farmers that are often left out. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great Maybe point on inclusion there. Or read the stickies on the jam board anymore. It worked early on, but for the last 10 minutes, it hasn't worked at all. Uh, so sorry to hear that. Um, I don't know, Tommy, if you have a solution to that. Alternatively, Mike, could you paste maybe your comment in the chat box so that we I'm can- I'm just trying to read the comments that oh. it's already there and it's they're all tiny. They're not re readable. Mike, if you go uh, up to the link in the chat or Tommy, if you could repost that link, you can you can go to that page on your own browser and zoom in. On the page, it doesn't work though. You can't open any any of the stickies to read them. There, there is a zoom button at the top left hand corner of the web page. If you if you can see that, that's what that's what I've done. Yeah, the looking glass button. I don't know what that is. I think we will be very soon redirected to the plenary session. Um, and just wanted to give a last chance to anyone who would like to, to speak. We will make sure to record all the contributions you made in the, in the Jamboard, also in the chat box. Thank you so much. This is really, really valuable. Um, Camilo, I, still did, you still, I see that you still have your hand up. Is that from your previous intervention or would you like to speak? again okay thank no you. i i i am writing my response i just lowered my hand thank you thanks uh would anybody else like to make comment a comment um before we are redirected to the to the main I, yeah this is jen c sagan just i think one one fear that i have about these types of processes is that we get really focused on um, small strategic things rather than looking at really the big impactful um, issues at a, at a very high level um, in finance. So, you know, I think that like climate information services, that's really, that's, that could have impact on a lot of different areas, for example, as the, the previous point, rather than talking specifically about very narrow things, I encourage you to look at huge systems. <laughs> 